It is day two here at the 2023 New York International Auto Show, and I am not nearly as peppy as yesterday. I need more coffee. Uh, I'm wearing about half of the outfit that I packed because I didn't like the sweater that I bought for this. And uh, enough about that, because what I'm standing next to is a fully redesigned 2024 Hyundai Kona. Let's get into it, sweetie. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Sparkplug TV. My name is Chris and I do car reviews for literally everybody, not just car enthusiasts. And by that, I mean the gays, the girlies, and everyone in between. Before I begin, please don't forget to like this video, comment something down below, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so that you get notified whenever I drop a new video, which is whenever I can. Thank you so much. Huge shout out to Johnson Hyundai of Cary for sponsoring today's video. Johnson Hyundai of Cary is the number one volume Hyundai dealership in North Carolina and recently opened a second location in Wake Forest. Link in the description below, right in the little description box that nobody ever reads. Do you read it? Let me know, because I never read it. Oh my gosh, so yes, the fully redesigned 2024 Hyundai Kona here at the New York International Auto Show. And I gotta tell you, it looks just about the same, but with a line running through the front and the back. No, I'm not giving it enough credit because it, uh, it does actually look very, very good. So I guess since I've already kind of talked about the design to begin with, let's just talk about the redesign. So it's definitely following the new design language that they're coming out with. You know, they came out with a new redesign for the Sonata and they're following suit with the new Kona. It's definitely still got the same kind of headlight situation, but they've added this new light bar with two brighter lights that kind of look like headlamps, but they're not because obviously the headlamps are located down here. And it's funny because like the front end actually kind of looks like an electric car, even though it's not. But, well, I'll talk about the electric car in a second. Let's go to the back. Whereas the previous generation was very, very boxy, this one is actually pretty boxy with a dash of bulbousness. Don't know if that's a real word. Someone will probably correct me. This being the end line, it does come with this dual wing situation on the tailgate, whereas the SE or SEL that is situated over there doesn't have that, but it does have like a little bit of a wing situation. I don't really mind either, um, but I will say that it does definitely look more a little bit like a hatchback now. I do like the light bar situation on the back. In terms of the design language on the back, it does share equally with the last generation in the sense that like the tail lamps are actually situated here, even though this kind of looks like a tail lamp in and of itself. They've also completely just, this is the trend now this spelling out of your car's name. I feel like they're just making it harder and harder for you to debadge your car. <laughs> what if I don't want this? <laughs> I mean, I could take this stuff off, but. So this being the end line, it's powered by a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. You can also opt for the naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder engine. It's projected to have a zero to 60 in about 7.6 seconds. Ooh, that wing on the back isn't helping much. It's gonna have four trim levels starting at $24,000 and the top tier limited is gonna be only $32,000. So this subcompact is pretty reasonably priced. Enough about the boring gas powered ones, let's talk about the queen of the show. The 2024 Hyundai Kona all electric. And while the ICE versions come in all wheel drive or front wheel drive, the battery powered one only comes in front wheel drive. This one is powered either by a 49 kilowatt hour battery pack or a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack. And off the bat, I mean, you can tell that they designed this with the electric vehicle only in mind because the product specialist just told me that they focused on designing this one first before the ICE, which is why the ICE versions look like an electric vehicle. What do you think about this color? This is a very neon green, very neon looking. Um, it's very interesting. I don't know, it's a little standout-ish for me, but making our way to the back of the car, hang on one second. I need more coffee. Okay, 
Making our way to the back of the vehicle, you can tell that it does have kind of that ionic design language uh, in terms of like the pixelation of the back LED bar as opposed to the ICE versions. So this one does have a power lift gate, um, but the some of the models don't have the power lift gate, but they did focus on making the, uh, it's about six inches longer than the previous model. So it's giving way to a lot more cargo capacity in the back and a lot more leg room in the second row. You know, I told them to keep the spinner going because I thought it would be kind of a gag. Talk to me when I'm editing the video and maybe I'll let you know if it actually is gaggy. Being that this is an EV, they do have some of the components up front, but it does also have the tiniest, cutest little frunk. Kind of like the Ionic 5, but it actually looks either comparable or a little bit bigger than the Ionic 5s, so. Anyways, enough about this, let's go inside. I am currently sitting in the limited model and right off the bat, I can tell you that it does actually look and feel a little bit more premium than the outgoing generation. They are following suit with the Ionic kind of look to it. They're like for completely foregoing the Hyundai logo on their steering wheel and replacing it with these four Ionic dots kind of situation. An interesting choice, I will say. Another interesting choice is the gear selector. They are really, really going for this Ionic 5 type of gear selector. Not my favorite, but I do like the fact that this is a bit more square, a little bit more rectangle, so it does make it a little bit more uh, ergonomic or accessible in that sense. You can tell that this one is the all-wheel drive because it does have the locking differential as well as different drive modes. Uh, it does have heated seats and it does have a 360 degree camera in this model, which is pretty premium. The product specialist told me that they're trying to appeal to all audiences. You can also see that there's some USB-C inputs. There is a uh, wireless car charging pad. Literally does not look like it would fit my fat phone. But it does also come with some tactile buttons. A lot of the tactile buttons are looking pretty good. And then it does, of course, have this infotainment system. It looks a lot more high definition than when I had my Elantra's infotainment system. It is a little bit more, I don't know, kind of iPhone-esque in the, in the operating system sense. Um, it does have a navigation system. Um, there is phone projection as well as uh, HD radio weather data and a calendar so that you can schedule your appointments in your Hyundai Kona. Imagine that. I don't have to schedule mine, mine just happen. <laughs> I don't see any heads up display. I do remember that the older Kona did have a heads up display. It was this like flimsy piece of plexiglass that kind of rose from the dashboard. This one doesn't seem to have one, but it does have this kind of wrap around uh, digital screen situation. It does also have paddle shifters. Not every car needs a paddle shifter. It just doesn't. This is not one of them that needs a paddle shifter. I can bet your bottom dollar that nobody who's driving this knows what a paddle shifter is. And I say that from experience. But yeah, I mean like, from first glance and first impressions, I mean, I really enjoy the way that this is kind of laid out and kind of set up. It's a lot more premium looking. I will agree with the product specialist. It's a lot more premium looking than in past generations. And I'm excited to see these on the road. All right, well, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon so that you get notified whenever I drop a new video, which is whenever I can, because I'm done making false promises. I can't believe that this is my tagline now. <laughs> Thank you again to Johnson Hyundai of Kerry for sponsoring today's video, and I will see you guys when I see you guys, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Hey, Sparks, thanks for watching today's video. If you want more Sparkplug TV content, click right here. Right here. You got two options. <laughs> Choose one or both.